Hello, I am your host, Selena Robinson, and you are listening to Journey to Gentle Podcast. I am a mama on a journey to be more compassionate, mindful, and supportive with myself, my kids, and others. Thank you for joining me on this journey. This is my very, very first podcast, and I wanted to thank you so much for tuning in and listening. In this podcast, I was hoping to be able to introduce myself, a little bit about my story and where I am now, and also what exactly it is that I'm advocating for here. So I will be talking about a wide range of topics. I think that I will mostly be discussing parenting, but on my journey, I've realized that many of the things that I've learned in regards to parenting also apply to adults. And so that is definitely something that will be mentioned several times. And that is why in the intro, I include that I want to be more compassionate, mindful, and supportive with not just my kids, but also myself and others. Because all of this is connected. It, it It's not just about the kids and how we parent them, but it's also about ourselves and how we treat and support ourselves. And then also how we treat and support other members of our family and other members of the community. That is a very important aspect of all of this. It is all connected. So I wanted to start off with a definition of gentle parenting because that is, um, again, parenting will probably be the main subject that I am talking about. And there isn't really like one definition of what exactly gentle parenting is. And that's why I feel like it's really important to define because different people define it different ways. To different people, it means different things. There are many other umbrella terms that it could fit under. Some of them I really like and I agree with, I advocate for, they really resonate with me. But then there are a few that I'm kind of like, mm, I, yeah. To start off with, gentle parenting is a relationship-based parenting style that seeks to discipline or teach in a way that strengthens the relationship between parent and child. This parenting style seeks to share in the power through collaborative problem solving. It also meets children and all parties involved, including adults, where they are at instead of expecting them to meet the expectations of the one in power. So gentle parenting sees all behavior as communicating a need, so like a need for connections, a skill, autonomy. From there, we kind of get curious about what this need is. So we look at the behavior and we also look at things that have recently happened to see if we can figure out why this behavior is happening. And then from there, we once we figure out that need we seek to again meet that need so connection could mean spending time together or playing a skill could mean coping strategies to deal with anger autonomy could mean the ability to make choices and decisions and then have those choices and decisions respected uh gentle parenting does not include timeouts, punishments, rewards, imposed consequences, or like punitive or coercive actions. So like there are natural consequences and the thing with natural consequences is that they happen like just regardless they happen on their own. Gentle parenting does not impose consequences which are punishments, timeouts, um, taking things away because these actions weaken the connection with the child. The reason why this parenting style is focused so much on the relationship is because the relationship is pretty much central to everything, right? It is the thing that allows us influence and encouragement over the child. It is the thing that helps them to listen to us, um, to actually hear what we're saying, to actually want to engage with us to be willing to share with us. There was something that I wrote that says, children accept our guidance because of who we are to them, not because we place ourselves in a position of authority above them. 
the more children feel heard and understood, the more they are willing to hear and understand other people. I mean, that's huge. Uh, I, so I know a lot of people think that when you have a child and you do things from a position of authority over them, um, and you do use those punitive methods of getting them to do what you want them to do, that it always works, that uh, it means that they respect you, and things of that nature, but it's really just fear. Typically, a lot of times, they are responding from a position of fear. Fear of what will happen to them if they don't do what you say. And gentle parenting doesn't want to teach from a place of fear. So what does gentle parenting include? Tools that gentle parenting offers are times in, collaborative problem solving, nonviolent communication, which is like a thing on its own, emotional coaching, play, and there are many more tools that are offered within gentle parenting. One of my favorites being meditation. I don't exactly want to get into those right now, right in this. There will definitely be podcasts where I get a little deeper into the things that gentle parenting excludes, and then when I get into the things that gentle parenting includes, so that I can offer more information on those. Okay, so who is Selena? Let's get into that. Let's let's talk a little bit about me and who I am. So my name is Selena. I am 27 years old. I am a cis heterosexual female. I have two kids, a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And it is very possible that you will hear them from time to time in these podcasts because that is kind of my life. As I'm recording this, it is one in the morning and my four-year-old is still awake. So yeah, but that is all a part of my journey. I have a degree in early childhood education and at some point I do want to go back to school for developmental psychology. I am absolutely positively interested in the way that children think and their perception of the world and how that affects their development. I do also want to own a daycare in the future. That is what I call an oasis for kids. I want them to be as free as possible to be themselves free from shame and judgment and just be able to learn and play and be kids. I would say that my journey to gentle starts with my mother who was raised in a very traditional, very strict household. Her father was military. She is also currently active duty army. And growing up in such a strict household, she did not want the same thing for us. So she sought to do something different. And she did. I do think that in many ways she wanted to parent gently herself, but she she didn't have the same resources that I have now. So she wasn't able to do exactly what I'm doing, but I do remember doing things like sitting down to have a conversation where she wanted to come up with solutions together. But me and my brother kind of didn't feel safe uh, giving our opinions or sharing what we thought might work. And my mom, like, she honestly did the best she could with what she had and the knowledge that she had in trying to make that the kind of environment that she was giving us. And so that that is where my journey starts. Uh, I would say that it, it continues growing up and remembering I would say that this is kind of like a two-parter. So growing up as a child and remembering being punished and then also being an adult with those memories and being able to look at them from an adult's perspective. So one of the things that I remember the most is being kicked out of my bedroom because I was not keeping it clean. And this was my stepfather's doing. But, um... As an adult, I've realized that I get very easily overwhelmed with cleaning, especially with the little stuff. And so kicking me out of my room doesn't teach me how to clean it. It doesn't give me those skills. It doesn't help me with the overwhelm. 
And as an adult, I'm able to see that there were definitely different ways in terms of dealing with that from like the punishing. So like the taking things away, taking away privileges, taking away the whole room itself, cleaning the room for me. None of that actually gave me the skills to be able to clean the room, if that makes sense. There were times because my mom is active duty military and she would be deployed or off to the field where I would have to live with her parents. And I remember coming home every day after school on the bus with this just horrible feeling in my stomach, thinking that I did something no, not thinking that I did something wrong, afraid that I did something wrong, trying to figure out if I did something wrong, knowing that I did nothing wrong, worried that they were going to find something wrong and then that I was going to get a whooping. Every day living there, I lived with that fear. And and that fear did nothing but make me compliant. And that compliance and that fear for me, it meant that I never stood up for anyone. It meant that I kind of just sat back and watched the vast majority of things in my life. I, in the fight, flight, or freeze response, I froze every time, and I still do, and it's something that I'm definitely working through, but that fear just had so much control over me that I couldn't do anything. And I remember after getting spankings that my grandfather would always tell me that he loved me and he was doing that because he loved me. And in those moments, I definitely did not feel loved. It's like, I know you love me, but I, I'm not feeling it. No, nope, not at all. And I don't ever want there to be like a situation where I have to say, I'm doing this because I love you. I want that love to be felt. And it's definitely a hard task to do. And it's pretty much impossible. There are going to be times where maybe the kids don't like the decisions that I make. My goal is to never have actions that harm my children in ways that I'm sitting there trying to convince them that I love them. And and these are ways that go past the physical punishment for me. So the taking things away, um, I do remember when things were taken away from me, I was never thinking about what I did. I was always thinking about life not being fair and hating my parents and et cetera, et cetera. Thinking back on my childhood, it, I think about when I was a lot younger, in about third grade, when I was that young, I used to think that God put me on this earth to be sad, to absor absorb everybody's sadness. I didn't feel like I had a reason to be sad, especially considering that I had a roof over my head and was surrounded by people that loved me. Uh, and we are in a very secure uh, position, privileged position. So I didn't feel like I had a reason to be sad and I couldn't quite understand why I was sad. And so I just assumed that everybody was all carefree and whatnot because I was absorbing their sadness for them. Now I understand that to be depression. I was depressed for a pretty young age. And at at the very least, I understand, like, I can't control whether or not my kids end up depressed, but I, w what I would like to do is to be able to be in tune with them and to help them to be in tune with themselves so that we are able to identify these things together and we're able to help each other together. So, <laughs> as an adult, so I, I mentioned before, in, that I had never stood up for anyone out of fear. Even though I was taught to, I was definitely taught to stand up for others, but that fear had had and, and still often has more control over me than that lesson of standing up to people. So the first person that I ever stood up for 
was my oldest, my four-year-old Zion, when I left his father, that he is the first person I have ever stood up for. And since then, I have been standing up for him and I continue to and I will continue to. And I want to teach him to be able to do these things for himself. And I don't think that comes from muting his voice is all I can think. A lot of people, you know, think that children shouldn't say, shouldn't be allowed to say no. They shouldn't be allowed to talk back. They shouldn't be allowed to do this and that. But I feel like that that is the start of taking away his voice. What I would like to do is teach him that there, teach him how to harness his voice, how to use his voice versus telling him he shouldn't have this voice because he's too little for it. I believe that that can be done through gentle parenting and, um, as I've mentioned before on this journey, I've learned that many of the same things that I'm learning in terms of parenting children also go for adult relationships and myself, being in tune with myself, being in tune with my kid, being in tune with my partner as much as possible, having that open line of communication that has as little shame as possible, as little judgment as possible so that we are really able to share and be open with each other. Now, let me tell you, okay, like I said, this is a journey. I am not by any means perfect. So far from being perfect, it's not even funny. Adult relationships for me are like so hard to navigate. So that is, that is my biggest struggle. The two things that I'm, that I feel are a bit easier for me, are navigating parenting my kids and then navigating being in tune with myself. And I guess I, I since this is a journey, it's like why not include uh something else that I struggle with? So like right now one of our biggest struggles are siblings. So as I said I have a four year old and a one year old and a four year old is having trouble adjusting to being an older sibling. And we have good days, we have bad days, we have bad weeks, yeah. <laughs> like, navigating this has, navigating their relationship and helping them with their relationship because the baby cannot talk and cannot advocate for himself, so I have to be the one to be able to do that. And the four-year-old does not understand the baby. and does also at times have trouble advocating for himself and being able to articulate what it is that he's feeling, that there is often quite a bit of conflict between them already. And so that has been something that we've been having to navigate. So some of the things that I will be touching on that will be coming up, um, race, hitting siblings, gender consequences, meditation and mindfulness. I have a lot of ideas that I really hope that you guys will stick around for. And I hope that in just the beginning of this, I've been able to articulate myself a little bit. <laughs> That is it for my very first podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. You can check me out at journeytogentle.com and on social media at Journey to Gentle. Also, I would like to add, because this is a journey, I am definitely open to suggestions. I am open to criticisms. I I want to hear your thoughts. Like I'm opening the floor to you and I will open the floor after every podcast, every article, every post. I want to hear your opinion and your thoughts. I'm still learning. I'm still growing and I want to learn and grow with you. So let's continue this journey together. And until next time, bye.